So um, tell me about your gang. You know, what gangs do you have? Are there many? Uh, mostly in this area, Vice Lords uh, and Gangster Disciples, uh, Folks mostly. Uh, we have a few of the uh, the Latin gangs, Sir Thirteen. But mostly, it's GD and Vice Lords in this area. And um, talk to me about the program. I know it's unique. What makes that program? Well, it's something we started in the in the Department of Corrections. It's been a big problem here, especially in the juvenile facility. The the gangs, the gang problems. Uh, the group just the kids just getting up in groups and, and causing problems. Uh, a lot of these are maybe not wouldn't be legitimate on the street, but once they come to DOC, then no, they come part of this. Uh, a lot of violence, some extortion problems in regular population. So uh, we just try to address this need. The kids who are identified as as being members. We bring them down here, we kind of isolate them from the rest of the population. Uh, they, they wreck by themselves, they eat by themselves. We try to cut them off and really focus on, you know, uh, our program consists mostly of independent thinking, uh, make them see the realities of, of what they're doing in these gangs. I mean, they say they're claiming they're helping out the community, but what they're really doing is they're causing damage, whether they're selling drugs or just, you know, robbery and crime like that. Okay, talk to me about um, the uniqueness of your program. I understand you put Several different yeah, we have. I mean, it's it's not all GD. It's GDs, Vice Lords, Sir Thirteen. All we all brought them all together uh, to deal with this. We forced them to interact. You know, in general population, GD and, and the Vice Lords, they probably wouldn't associate. They'd be you know against each other. They wouldn't talk. And here, since they're isolated, they have to. They have to. They they realize they're really the same. They're more the same than they are different. You know, maybe they were brought up different in these in these rival gangs, but they're really more similar. Than they are different. They're down there by themselves, isolated, so then they have to play cards together. They have to play basketball, or they can't do it. They just, I mean, which, they realize they're the same, so it cuts down on that problem. I mean, they realize that, you know, this vice lord, and I'm GD, but, you know, we grew up just far from each other. Our mamas are the same, you know, we both didn't have fathers, we both had the same charge. We're both trying to do the same things with our lives, and, uh, it, it's, it's weird, because it, at first, when you can see them, it's a little scary at first. When you know these have been in general population, maybe they started a pretty big fight. Now they're almost best buddies. You know, they they're showing each other respect. They're playing cards with each other. They're really just doing things that you don't see uh, in, in regular population. Uh, we hope this will continue once they leave here. Once they go back out in the streets, that they'll realize you know that that lifestyle they once led won't be the same. They realize what they were doing was really destroying their lives. About how many months has this program been going on? Uh, we started this in November, so we're going about seven or eight months. Uh, we've had a couple groups with, uh, we've had pretty good success so far, we think. Um, it's a little too early to tell long term if this really has an effect, but in the short term, you know, the kids we went through here, typically most of them are having better conduct once they receive it. The write ups are down, their actions are better, they're, they're going home finally. Uh, we, we've had there's, a, of course, there's some we've had no success with. There's some kids that this hasn't uh, affected at all, but the majority of them have improved their behavior. Uh, we hope it continues. We're still tracking it, the kids that have completed this program, but we're we're hopeful that the, what we've seen so far will pan out and have a real effect in these future. Uh, we've been working with parole and trying to track the kids that went home. We talked to probation. Uh, the two or three kids that we have had been released, uh, there's no, been no new arrests yet. I mean, they've been out for a short time, only a couple months, but they're working. Uh, one of them's enrolled in college. So uh, right now they're making the right steps. Hopefully it'll continue. Uh, in a couple of years, we'll really be able to see an effect whether this worked or not. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, Lamar Bradford? Lamar Bradford, he came over. He was in uh, the Youthful Offender Program. He's uh, one of the older students who we have here. Uh, Got in, a, got in a lot of trouble over there. Got run around with some uh, some other gang members. He uh, uh, involved in a little extortion ring, kind of him and another offender who's been through this program previously. Uh, got in a lot of trouble. Uh, he's uh, from Chicago, so he's part of the Blackstones, is what he claims for his coming here. Uh, he, he's shown since he's come here. He's been here about three months. He's shown a lot of maturity. He's. Uh, decided to uh, kind of leave the gang stuff in the background. Uh, we don't know for sure if he'll give that up forever, but you know it's in the background now. He's not you know doing the gang banging. He's not associating with that. Uh, uh, a, a lot of improvement since he's come here. Uh, he's got some younger family. His mother's pretty close to him, so he's ready to go home. He's a uh, part of a Lake County program. 
So once he leaves here, I have a, a lot of work to do with, with the probation department in that county, which hopefully should help him uh, to keep him on track and get his GED, get a job, and stay out of trouble. Uh, Lamar's come a long way. Uh, I didn't, he was one of our more knowledgeable, at least, offenders about the gang, so he was pretty legitimate. Uh, hopefully what, he'll take what he's learned here and, and stay out of that kind of lifestyle. That's actually my next question. Is what, what do you see for Lamar's future? Well, I mean, he could go one way. There, he could barely, he's going back to the same environment, so he could very easily fall back into his old, uh, old ways, get back in trouble, and he's 18 years old now, so he'll go to an adult facility if he, if he re-offends. Um, he also has the potential to do great things, you know, go out there, he's been working towards his GED, his scores have come up, go out there, get his GED, get a job, uh, educate himself, and, and be successful, be a good role model for his younger brothers, and, and help his mother out. Uh, I have hope for him, you know, you're a little worried about all these kids, they could go either way. Uh, he has the potential to do pretty much what he wants to do with his life, but I mean, you go back to that same environment, it's scary. Um, let's pause for just a moment. During group, Charles was, he was usually the loudest one, the most outspoken. He would, he would share what he thought. Uh, I think a lot of his feelings changed as time went on. He was more about, you know, I had to do this. I, I was forced to do this. Uh, at the end, he was like, you know, I chose to do this. Uh, I don't have to choose that again. I can make this of my life. He wants to go to the Navy. Uh, he wants to be a Navy SEAL. I think he could be a great one. Uh, I have a lot of hope for him. I'm hoping he keeps in contact with us and let him know how he's doing. Uh, Again, he's returned to that same environment that got him in trouble. So, I mean, that's a little nervous. You know, if he falls back into that same, that click of friends, he could very easily pick up a new charge. We're hoping that Charles will stay to his word and keep his plans. Uh, he got his GED wise here. Hopefully he's at a recruiting station right now, signing up uh, with the Navy, and he, he can be on his way to becoming a Navy SEAL. Can you tell me a little bit about Charles's family? Are they supportive of him? Is he... Uh, Charles's father has never really been in his life. Uh, uh, I think there was contact when he was he was younger, but since Charles can remember, there's really none. His mother's had battled some some drug addiction. Uh, she's been through rehab a couple times. I know she's had a couple relapses. Uh, she has been clean for I think nine months now, so there's hope there. But I mean, Charles never had a whole lot of stability growing up with his father never being in the picture and his mother struggling with her with her issues. Uh, she's clean now, which is good. Hopefully she can remain clean and, and be there because Charles will need some support. Uh, he'll need some help getting over the hump. He's, he's very capable, but without some kind of support there, I'm, I'm worried what might happen. I wonder, this is a little a little weird, but if you could kind of take me to, back to yesterday without saying yesterday and tell me how, how is Charles taking the fact that his mom hadn't shown up to his graduation and that sort of thing. Okay. As you were kind of going through the day with Charles, what kind of observations were you making okay. about him? Uh, Charles is very upset. His mother is running a little bit late. Uh, we did speak with her this morning. She had some car issues, I guess some flat tires. Uh, talked to her about an hour ago. Uh, she has gotten a, a ride. She's scraping up some gas money. She says she should be leaving in the next half hour. Charles is obviously frustrated. Uh, he, he was worried about this before. I think he's had some issues with, with mother coming through and not always being there. So he's, he's upset, he's worried. Uh, she has guaranteed me she'd be here, so hopefully, uh, if she won't be here, I'll drive him home myself. <laughs> we'll make sure this kid gets home. He doesn't need to stay here any longer. He's done what he needs to do. He has nothing left to prove, so. That, that what you wanted to do? Yeah, that's okay. fantastic, thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, get the sense from you. When a parent doesn't show up, in general, for a kid's release, what does that do to all the work you guys have been doing? It's obviously frustrating. Uh, we we built this kid up to you know do this so you can get home, do this, do this. You know, follow the rules, follow the program, work this program, make some changes so you can go home. And they they've done the work. They they followed the rules. They worked the program. They've done everything they had to do. And then mother doesn't come through. It's no fault of their own. It, it's frustrating. It seems like, you know, they've made these changes. They've tried to correct their issues, their problems, and now with, with mother not falling through on this, the, the kid regresses often. They go right back into, you know, I did all this for nothing. I worked hard and I get no reward. I'm still here. Uh, we have some placement issues with that. and It's hard to control those kids. They really have nothing to work for. There's no home to go to. There's no, there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So. It's difficult.
on the flip side of that, when you're working with a guy like Charles, he comes into your program, he's, he's a leader, he's a gang member, he, you know, he might be a little worrisome, and then you see that light bulb go off. Can you tell me what that's like for you? I mean, that makes the job worth it. I mean, those are the days uh, we're not paid all that well. Where I mean, we don't do this for recognition. But when it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Start again is like, you know, to see a kid get it, or a kid like Charles, yeah. or yeah, kind of incorporate that question. Right. So when you work with a kid like Charles, what work with a kid like Charles, it makes the job seem it, the better. It's it's when you go home that day, you're happier. When you see a guy make the changes you're asking him to, and see what he can do with his life, make positive steps to make his life better, that he doesn't have to resort to, to gangs or robbing people or selling drugs for money. He can, he can do other things. He has other options. I mean, that makes the job worth it. I mean, at the end of the day, you go home, you feel like you've accomplished something. I mean, there's a job not like a carpenter. You don't build a deck and it's there. Often in this job, you, you, you build that deck and you come in and it's torn down the next day. Uh, so when you see that deck, you know, it's finished, he's, he's done what he has to, and, and he's made those changes, he's a better person. What little part you played in it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you've accomplished something and you have helped somebody. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about the unit? or? Uh, to, I don't know. Do you have any specific... Uh, um, I don't know. It, you know, I guess maybe if you have any final comments about um, working in this particular unit or your job or... I mean, working in corrections is difficult for anybody, especially with, with this population, the juveniles. A lot of these kids are extremely difficult to work with. Uh, the ones who, who are willing to make changes make the job worth it, but it is frustrating at times when you see that these kids are unwilling, for whatever reason, to, to do what they have to to go home. Uh, very few kids have determinate sentences. They all get to pretty much pick their own out day by their behaviors. Um, it's difficult at times. You see, this way you do, and they don't want to follow through. They want their their rewards immediately. Um, they don't just think they should be punished for anything. And think, well, this guy did it too. It's difficult at times when you see like kids like Charles. Hopefully, when he gets out, he'll do all the things he's telling us he's gonna do, and that makes it worth it. If we see him uh, uh, in ten years getting a medal of honor from, I mean, I think well, maybe maybe I was part of that. Maybe I did help that kid. So, and that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you very much.